Holy smokes, that's a lot of layers. I'm on a quest to build the biggest, baddest photo manipulation website in the world, and I gotta be honest, this project is kicking my ass right now. Sometimes you need a little bit of help from your friends. I asked my Facebook buddy, Abhishek Adnai, to help me out with some of the sales art for the website, and the piece he submitted literally blew my mind. I've met some crazy Photoshop artists in my time, but this guy is on another level. In this video, we're going to check out how Abhishek put this monster together, and even though the piece looks complicated, I'll be sharing 5 tips to help you make better landscapes in Photoshop. Abhishek kicks things off with some windmills on the foreground that he put together in Blender and brings in photo stocks to fill the scene out. What you see here is Photoshop 101, good old fashioned layer masks to bring things together. Now I've got to be straight up with you guys, I really do suck at landscapes. That's why I got the main man Abhishek to help me out with this project and hopefully get this damn website out a bit sooner. I kind of squeaked my way through doing landscapes during my book cover career but I've got nothing on psychos such as Abhishek or PM's own child prodigy Redwan. With that being said, I'm an old Photoshop war dog and know enough to drop some knowledge on you today. First tips, it's all in the stocks. Abhishek's work looks super clean because he's using quality assets. I always describe photo manipulation to newbies as collage on steroids, and just like cooking up a storm in the kitchen, you need the best ingredients. Anything less than that, you end up with a dog's dinner, and photo manipulation is just the same. When choosing your stocks, try your absolute best to avoid Google image search because one, you're probably not allowed to use the stocks, and two, more often than not, they're compressed, made smaller for the websites they're posted on, so quality is usually low. If you're just starting out or low on money, there's three options out there with pretty decent stocks including Pexels, Unsplash, Pixabay and PX here. Links for all those are in the description below. There are some downsides to free stock sites however, the biggest being the lack of decent figure stocks, especially in the fun genres such as fantasy, sci-fi or horror. As well as the lack of options, there's also quality issues with free stocks, so for that reason, me and the team use Adobe Stock for most of our needs. We're not sponsored by Adobe to plug that, it's what we use every day for the channel on our freelance work. We pay for it, we use it and believe in it, so I have no problems at all recommending Adobe Stock to you guys. Link in the description if you want to check out Adobe Stock, we get a little kickback if you use that link, it costs no extra to you and helps out the good wholesome people of the PM team. Cutting stuff out is one of the main skills of the photo manipulation workflow. Often called masking or compositing, there's literally 10,000 ways to cut things out in Photoshop. A tool for every occasion. For the mountains, Abhishek is using the magic wand, a quick and dirty selection tool often used for less detailed elements such as backgrounds or minor details. It's fast and easy, often used by newbies learning the software for the first time, but it has its uses for seasoned pros too. Fuzzy objects can be blended using a layer mask and a soft edge brush set to black, which works great for softer blends and transitions. Here you can see Abhishek using a layer mask to bring some grass into the wider scene. For sharper objects such as this fencing, the pen tool is king and can't be beat. Now I know the pen tool could be a real tricky beast to master but hang in there. To achieve sharper more realistic results, get the pen tool figured out as soon as you can, I absolutely promise it's worth the initial effort. Just like riding a bike, figure it out once and you have a skill for life. Drag and drop PNG stocks like these trees can make life much much easier especially with crazy complex artworks like this. For this project, Abhishek is using assets from the tree and foliage mega pack to fill out the scene with some greenery, and if you want these stocks for your own projects, I'll put the link for that bundle down in the description. With the elements in place, it's just a case of blending it all together so everything looks like it's part of the same scene and has that realistic vibe that's pleasing to the eye. Abhishek is using adjustment layers to make this happen. Now this might sound complicated, but it's actually quite simple. Adjustment layers are what we call non-destructive editing. This means you can mess about with things like brightness, contrast or colour on its own layer and not make permanent changes to the pixel data of the layers below. In plain English, this gives you the freedom to go back and change or tweak anything you like at any time without causing damage to your layers. If you were to apply the effects directly to the pixel data of a layer without using an adjustment layer, your stock images will progressively get more blurry and pixelated and not be sharp and pleasing like Abhishek's work here. There's a lot of elements in this piece and each element has its own stack of adjustment layers, that's why this layer stack for this project is so massive. As the title says, I think Abhishek is a bit of a Photoshop genius being able to wrangle this many elements in a single PSD. I've seen a few of Abhishek's speed arts now and I've noticed he has a go-to method for creating realistic shadows. For the fencing, Abhishek creates a selection based on the layer, command and click a layer to create the selection, control and click if you're on a PC, then fills the selection with a dark brown tone from the floor and fills on a new layer above. 
Using the free transform tool, he tweaks the shape and then scrolls through a couple of blend modes to get the right look for the scene. This technique is used a few times in the project and here you can see it in action with the shadow being added to the dog. I've used this shadow trick for years and years now, it's a classic. Now I've got to be honest with you guys, I was a bit late to the parade with the camera raw filter and now it's one of my very favourite tools in Photoshop. Camera raw filter is great for adding the final tweaks or edits to a completed artwork. I personally like to call this stage global processing, the final polish before a piece is fully finished. I like the speed and ease of using a single dashboard for these final edits and I usually go through a similar process as Abhishek is doing right here to round off my artworks too. The settings I usually mess about with are in the basic section including exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites and blacks but I also really like the texture, clarity and detail sliders too. I see Abhishek messing about with the calibration sliders there and I never really touched them so I've got some experiments to do in the future to see what that's all about. If you're not already familiar with the camera raw, don't make the same mistake I did. Go to filters, camera raw, fire that baby up and start to experiment. Incredibly powerful tools that can really help you with your artwork. Be sure to check out Abhishek's artist portfolio, link in the description. And if you want to see another one of his amazing projects, be sure to watch the next video where he creates air hanger concept art in Photoshop. That's it for this one team. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you at the next one.